know, you went to see the doctor, you know, you know, for, you know, the other day. And I see this woman, she had a mask on, and mm. she says, hey, how are you? Uh, and I went, yo, how are you doing? And then she said, I gotta tell you a story. I was at the museum a couple weeks ago for an event, and there were people there from, you know, Phoenix, who, who, who are Mexicanos. And they said, wow, I wish we had this in Phoenix. I had so much orgullo walking to the museum. Those are good stories. That's what you want to create. That's what this place is about. So those are important kind of stories. Uh, you know, it's important that, um, that we speak up. And, you know, you don't like it? Mexicanos, we're, you know, we, we don't speak up enough. And we need to change that. We need to change that. Thank we you. aim for that as well. If you go across the country and you visit, you know, museums or cultural centers that are grounded in one culture, overwhelmingly, you're going to find either they get only the people from, from their own community or, they, you, know, you know, tourist traps. They're really for the tourists. Not many get what we do. Half our attendance is Mexicano, half our attendance is not Mexicano. That's important. You know, you know, our number one goal is to preserve and conserve our culture for the Mexicano community. But we also have a goal of teaching non-Mexicans. When a non-Mexicano comes to the museum, in a sense, he's honoring us because he's saying, I don't want to learn from Hollywood. <laughs> I don't want to learn from those horrible school books. I want to learn from you because you're Mexican. So in a sense, they're honoring you, and that's very important to us. That's very, very important to us. Because we do teach people, like, you know, like one of my jokes is, the first cowboy wasn't John Wayne, it was Juan Wayne, okay? <laughs> we were here first, okay? So I think, I think it's important. And some people say that, you know, that, 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 you know, we're trying to rewrite the history. No, no, we're telling history correctly for the first time. We're not rewriting anything. You wrote it wrong, <laughs> not us. We want to we, we wanna say how it really happened correctly. And you know, we show the good and bad of Mexico too. We just don't, you know, like sports teams, you know, like you're for Chivas and Chivas loses five to nothing. Oh, and a referee, but he was cinco, not a meal. <laughs> it wasn't the referee. No, I'm not like that. I'm not like that about Mexico. I love Mexico, but you got, we did a show on, um, uh, you know, Ciudad de Juarez, where the woman got killed. Oh, people from the government of Mexico, oh, the consul, they got very upset. This is about 10 years ago. No, about 15 years ago. They were very upset. No, it's malo, they say, it's malo, it's not pasando. We got to stop this. And we got to teach people this is still happening and it's wrong. Oh, but you know, but, but you know, how can you be a proud Mexican and do this? Yeah, because I love Mexican. I'm Mexican woman being killed. Yes, we have to stop this. You don't ignore it, but then it's not there. You don't say it's UFOs. Give me a break. So it's important that we say these things. And sometimes people don't like it. But you know, you, you, know, you don't make change sometimes without getting people upset. I don't know how you do that in life. Sometimes, you, you know, it's not easy. Our philosophy hasn't changed at all. Todo the mission, todo is the same. The difference is, and I like to use the word power, <laughs> we have more power now. We're larger, you know, we do things all over the place. Uh, we're, we're working a lot with Chiapas now. Uh, but you know, we worked all over Mexico. We sponsored a movie. Uh, a young um, filmmaker from, from, from the state of Guerrero came to visit me, right? Just spur the moment. And I'm crazy. If I'm free, yeah, come on over. I'm not, oh, you're not, you know, uh, you know come back in nine months. You know, so yeah, see. I'm free, venta, venta, mijo. And he had a video and he showed me the, the movie and it was uh, about Guerrero and he was showing me the jungle Guerrero. And the Jaguar, I love Jaguars. I, I'll tell you stuff about Jaguars. I love Jaguars. And uh, I saw, it says, I'm going to give you money. The film, first film ever, went to the Cannes Film Festival. How's that? Pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Well, we had a pretty nice stage who was attacking Mexicanos viciously, viciously, you know. And uh, these people are being attacked. And we're saying, no, you're Mexicano, man. You're great. You have a great ancient culture. You know what you've done? You're amazing, you know? It's got to give him a sense of pride. It's got to make him feel good, you know, to fight back on this stuff. Uh, I remember in schools, you know, don't speak Spanish. Don't speak Spanish. Don't speak, what, what's, what's, wrong with him? what's wrong with Spanish? So you have to fight back. And so uh, we are embracing our culture and embracing them at the same time. It is Mexicano, eso es fantástico.
and you're important. And I'm a firm believer that all work is honorable. All work is important. You know, because you got 5,000 PhDs, so what? Are you a good human being? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, I think all honorable work is important. And so you honor that. Museums have to be afraid of m m making people angry. And I'm sorry, it's, you have to make people upset sometimes. I mean, you know, there's a policy that's wrong. You know, you know um, um, uh, Dreamers? We've done so many events for, for, for the Dreamers here. You know, we're going to continue doing that. We're pro-immigration. I mean, so sometimes you get people mad. Well, I tell you, how do you, I mean, if you look at people in history, how many of them were hated? Look at Jesus. I mean, how many people were hated, for God's sake? So, you know, I think we're afraid of not being liked. And we need to get over that. Respect it was you want. I want people to, to, to make sure they respect me, and more important than me, the culture maker. They don't have to like us. But if you do something against us, no, I'm not going to tolerate that. No, 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 you're not going to get away with that. So I think it's important for museums to speak up. But they're not supposed to because they're museums. You know, I think it's interesting in the sense because, you know, you know, I'm in favor of having a Latino museum. Don't get me wrong. But I always said the politics would be crazy. The politics would be crazy. And if they, they are crazy right now. That first show, controversial, it was boring. <laughs> it's a boring, it's, it's, what? <laughs> we would never do an exhibition like that. It's very boring. It's not a great exhibition. And so it's a different concept of a museum. So I think it's important for it to happen, but it's never going to be, I mean, they can't do the shows. I mean, they can, but they won't. I think if, you know, like, if I ever had that job, I have the best job in the world. I'm not going anywhere. But if I had that job, I'll be fired within a week. <laughs> I'll be gone in a week. Uh, you know, you have to say things the way they are. And the government needs to let you say things the, the way they are. And so uh, I didn't like that someone attacked it saying that, you know, this is a Southern, you know, a California influence. That's, that's Mexican, he's saying. And isn't the, the, so we have a non mexican Latino saying this. That's wrong. And that's going to be happening a lot. So I always tell people, I want to be alive to see it. It's going to take a long time for it to happen. So I'm going to live a very long time. But I'm for the concept, always happen. I was on the first board of, of the Latino um, uh, Center at the Smithsonian. And so from the very beginning, I've been for this museum. But I said before, you got to do it right. And you're going to do it right, you're going to have cuts of controversy. What is we have to understand that there's a lot of things we have in common. So I'm proud to be Latino too, but I'm Mexican first and foremost. If, if, if we lose an individual, so of course we should work together as Latinos on political issues, but if we forget who we are, what makes us special, what's a Latino then? Especially about young people. I mean, if you know, someone calls himself, okay, Latino, okay, okay, tell me something about Chile. <laughs> You're Mexican, Puerto Rican? Tell me something about Uruguay. <laughs> Tell me something about Brazil about the, outside the fact that they play good soccer and they have a big carnival. No point in contestar. So we're creating this false agenda. We can be Mexicanos and still be Latinos. Europe, the French are still French. Trust me. The talents are still talents and they work together so it's possible to do it. But it has to be done on an equal basis. And, uh, and people need to understand. One of the problems we have is, is Mexicanos are you know, 61% 60% of all Latinos. But if, but if you look at jobs, we know we're close to that percentage. And yet if Mexicanos are all left tomorrow, the Asian population is much larger than Latino population. So there has to be an understanding about you know, our numbers. That's important. And my favorite story is, okay, you know, immigration. Uh, Cubans at one time saw immigration, I mean, they're their heroes. Abrazos, abrazos. Puerto Ricans are U.S. citizens. What is immigration? So I, and we're all Latinos. At one time we were the three largest, not Central Americans or past Cubans. But one time we were the three largest groups. And the way we view immigration is very differently, or politics. I mean, it's funny because I know people who have, you know, you know, you know, you know, Latino vote. I go, no, that's not enough because a lot of Latinos aren't voting, right? <laughs> so, so you need to, what you emphasize is Latinos who, who are going to vote for progressive politics, that should be your focus. Make sure they get out and vote. Because one of the things in this country is who comes out and vote? Not who you want to. Are you going to go that day and vote? Um, I do think that in this whole Latino thing, we need to be honest about, like I said, 
we should, how do we preserve individual cultures? So I tell people, there's no such thing as Latino culture. There's Latino cultures, parentheses, plural. And each country in Latin America has a beautiful culture, something they should be very proud of. And then we should work together on issues that impact us, like immigration. But you shouldn't say, you know, if a spaceship lands, somebody says that they're Latino, you're a liar, man. You're Mexican, you're Puerto Rican, Cuban. What do I mean? That's nonsense. I mean, you, in a sense, you, you are denying your culture, and, and you don't even know what Latino is. That's sad. That is sad. So a lot of people have agendas. It is what it is what it is. And, you know, corporate America wants you to be one way. I remember one time I was with a foundation person, and they said, you know, you know, your group say your primary job is to make yourself understandable to us. No, it isn't. My primary job is my community. You're second. <laughs> you know, this is what we need to do first and foremost. You know, we got, you know, Mackenzie Scott of Amazon, the co-founder. You know, she gave away all these billions of dollars. She gave us $8 million, just like that. You know, she has people go across the country and... It was, so people, reporters, a lot of reporters came and said, oh, so this, you know, you know, validates you. No, 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 no. This is a great honor. She in the room, I'll give her a thousand of Brussels, but this does not validate me. My community validates me. Mi abuelita will give me my bendición. That's who gives me my bendición. Nobody's not Mexican gives me the bendición. You don't have the power, the right to do it. Only make candles give me candles of bendición. Am I grateful? Yes. Am I super grateful? Yes, 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 yes. But it's not a validation. A recognition is different. But it's not a validation. And that gets people upset that I say that. It's true. It is for me, it's true. So it is changing the mindset and being a bit, you know, you know different. But, uh, you know, I'm the co-founder. It was my idea to, to be the catalyst to create the Chicago like, the, 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 um, uh, you know, theater lines. And so, of course, we should work together. But that shouldn't take the place. You know, um, and, I mean, that's what I'm saying when they force you to say, I was in fourth grade, and I grew up about a mile and a half away from here. And they would pass out these little cards that, you know, you put your name on and everything. And then they said, what group? And then the names they called us back then were crazy. But Mexicano, there was no place for Mexican. It just had other. You know, in, in like the word alien. Imagine alien. Isn't people from Mars alien? <laughs> We're aliens. <laughs> You're an alien. I'm not an alien. I'm from planet Earth. <laughs> You're an alien. Uh, so what do so you think I wrote? Mexican. But I'm not another. What's another? I'm in fourth grade. I'm fighting with this about it. It didn't make sense when I was in fourth grade. It doesn't make sense now. So I think you have to fight for your culture in this country. And no one will take my culture away from me. Nobody. That's, that's inconceivable that, that that happens. And I think a lot of Mexicanos feel that way. And I think it's important that you, know, you promote their culture because you know, you're promoting their mothers, their fathers, everybody. You know, they're, 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 they're a lot of Mexicano politicians who have tried to try to have control over us. I tell them, this place is about your mother, your father. Your grandparents, your great grandparents. Why do you want to control them? No, you're not going to control me. I'm not going to help you get money. Okay, bye. I mean, you you have to take those stands sometimes, and you do lose money sometimes, and you do lose people could be allies, but what they want isn't worth. It's not worth it. You know, like you know, like you know, corporations always want to put their names above us. No, 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 no. Below, below, not above us. No, and so, and some people don't get money. But I can stand next to that and be proud of it. Y mi abuelita, oh, she would kill me if I did that. Ya está muerta. 1993 años. She would, okay, 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 okay. I'm doing the right thing. I used to call her chula. Okay, chula, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. You know, me estoy portando bien, okay. I mean, you know, you know what's right or wrong. You have that inner thing that tells you, ooh, that's not, that's not. I mean, you know when you're doing things wrong. Come on. We know. 95% of the time, we know we should not have done that. And, you know, this is not the Carlos Museum. It's not the Carlos Otolo Museum. It's Mexican. Mexicano. So I have to make sure. And Mexicano is the, you know, those, those lados. That's very important to us. Very important to us. You're not more Mexican because you're born in Mexico. No. My, in fact, 
Mexico has two major problems. You're not going to agree with this. It's not the cartels. It's not the United States. It's not all the politicians who are crooked. Obviously, those are problems. The two major problems in Mexico are, one, they treat Mexicanos from this side like gente baja. And the intellectuals, whether at the universities, in politics, business, wherever, the people who have the power, right? The oligarchy, I just say intellectuals. The oligarchy in Mexico treat us like gente baja. Yet our money is keeping Mexico alive. If we stop sending money to Mexico, there goes Mexico. And instead of appreciating us, they treat us badly. I've, I can, the second thing we do, if you're light-skinned Mexicano, they treat you better. And the gente de los pueblos, los originarios, they should be like this, not like this. And we treat them badly. That's not right, it's not good. Because in a sense, and this is gonna blow you away, Racism is worse in Mexico than in the United States. Because a white racist would never consider a Mexicano, a black, a Latino. That's part of the dump. They're over there. Mm -hmm. But we all have sangre. I mean, how many of us don't have sangre? You know, in the Hina. Give me a break. Give me a break. So in a sense, you're down on yourself. You know, at the, um, um, the La Visa. Mm -hmm. If the only thing left of Mexico were, 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 the, were all the novellas, you would think most of the people in Mexico are light-skinned. And with money. <laughs> Everybody had money. I mean, and this is being done by our own people. That we have to attack. That we can't accept. That's bad. And when you talk to people who, who, are, who, 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 who are progressive, in Mexico, they don't like hearing this. There was a reporter from La Renada. We're, we were being interviewed. He goes, man, you spend so much time on racism. It's a racism, racism. And does it race in Mexico? No, I know race is in Mexico. What? What? I go, you know what? Te pago. Vamos dos semanas a Mexico. Te llevo. I bet you, yo pago todo. But if I'm right, después de dos semanas, tú me pagas a mí. Rompo mis gastos. Come on. Let's do it. Come on. Want to do it? Caete entonces. I get upset. No, I racismo in Mexico. And they call you classism. See, once again, you're trying to avoid what is the obvious. It's not racism. It's classism. No, 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 no. I'm working class. Mm -hmm. I'm not rich. Mm -hmm. So you can't say it's classism in my case. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things that are crazy mm -hmm. and make us a change.